things get epic on this episode of The Update. Hey, and welcome back to another Megiddo Gaming video. Well, Epic Games may be taking home a lot of awards for Fortnite coming this Gamer Choice Awards on the 9th, uh, but they're not happy with just that. Uh, while still high on their Fortnite success, Epic Games wants to become the new Steam. So Steam has a huge following. It's the main way that most people get their games, aside from, you know, others like Uplay and Origin and Microsoft, things like that. They are now wanting to become the new Steam. Good news to the developers. Uh, Epic is starting small. They, they want to move things a little slowly. They want to get a lot of traction, a lot of people contributing. So they're only going to be taking 12% out of the money made in their store. And that even includes use of the Unreal Engine. They don't even have to pay the royalties on that anymore. That's being replaced. And you know that's compared to Steam taking up to 30% of anything that's sold in the store. The bad news is, like I said earlier, that's yet another thing that we have to download to our computers to play certain games. Uh, I, I know myself, I have Origin on there for The Sims, you play for, um, uh, what's that, Rock Guitar game? I don't even know, I don't even play it anymore. <laughs> but that's just yet another one that we have to add to it. Now. With Steam being so powerful, do you think this will be as successful? Or could it hit a point where as Fortnite ages, it could be doomed to fail? Let me know down in the comment section below. Now speaking of Fortnite, Playground mode in Season 6 made it so we could build all we wanted, play mini games, you know, just chill and hang out on the map. The new creative mode will actually allow players to make their own maps and games, save them, and then share them with other people to be played later. Uh, but the rest of Season 7 has made a huge update to the map in form of change in size, style, and you know, to help traverse that map, they have now introduced zip lines and even planes. I mean, how big and how much more can we add to this game? And how long before it starts leaving a stale taste in people's mouth? Um, I personally love Fortnite Save the World. Wasn't a big fan of Battle Royale, but maybe that's just because I'm not any good at it. Uh, but it will be interesting to see how things go because they keep adding more and more to this game. It's just crazy all the things you can do now. I thought it was insane when you could get a shopping cart and push people around in it. Uh, but we'll see what the future brings. All right, so we're all familiar with in-game currencies. So for Neverwinter, for instance, you can use Zen, which Zen being purchased through Perfect World Entertainment could also be used on Star Trek Online. Now, what if that was a better, more secure cryptocurrency? There's something that's really hitting the mainstream now, and it's called blockchain. So imagine such a secure currency that it could even traverse other games. So for instance, you could play Star Trek Online and find a rare artifact on a planet somewhere, but that artifact is actually a powerful weapon that your Neverwinter character could use. And even if you don't play Neverwinter, you could then sell that for in-game currency, probably Zen, but it's now being tracked and monitored to the point that it can traverse other games for other players and even help with eliminate botting because of how securely something like this is tracked. Like if more games implemented something like this, you would see more of a return on your investment because this would incentivize you to continue to play your games because you're being rewarded for finding the rare items, for grinding out that in-game item and you know, use it in other games. Use it to get currency to use in the game that you like. You could end up selling that artifact to a different player of a different game to use to buy a mount in Neverwinter, just for an example. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because this is being taken by Epic Games, uh, Microsoft, Sony, and many others, and they're deciding to run with it, you know, work with it in their development and find better ways of, you know, uh, 
pretty much just giving us, instead of cross-platform gaming, a cross-currency type of gaming. And it's really interesting to see Sony in something like that because they usually don't play well, well with others in anything. So who knows, maybe they'll just use blockchaining specifically for their titles and not allow it to work cross-platform. We'll have to see. But it's very interesting to find that there could be a way for us to get more out of our games than we already are instead of those that you know maybe play CSGO and sell knife skins for money but you know actually kind of put an in-game currency that will continue to fulfill your gaming needs to the point that who knows maybe you would even be able to buy a game by that developer with in-game currency you got by finding a rare item in another game. Uh, let me know down in the comment section below if this is something that interests you. Do you think this would help or is it just another way that they can monitor us or make more money? Just let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And now for your comments. Talon, you lucky devil, you get two this week. When does the event end? I have four writs at the moment. Can I get the griffin by the end of the event? Sure you can. You're going to have to do a bit of grinding though. Uh, because you can actually turn in your Medal of Heroism for a chance to get uh, some extra writs if you need to. Uh, but your daily event, which rewards the writs, well, that's just daily. So if you don't want to grind for it, you can sit on your writs until uh, next year, and they'll still be there waiting for you to get the Griffin again. Why only console plebs make videos for Neverwinter on YouTube? Well... To show that I'm not such a lower class citizen, I answered your question that you posted. Uh, but please bear in mind, not just in this case, but just in general, when you're wanting assistance or uh, answering of a question, uh, try not to uh, speak to the people that are trying to help you as lower class citizens. Thank you, PC Master Ace. Michael, bro, are you running some Barovia lures? I really need the Heels of Fury and still don't have them. Would be very thankful. Uh, actually, I haven't been running anything. I've been stocking up on a few posters, getting my keys for the day, and I'll actually talk more about why I'm not running lures and other things uh, here in Megiddo's moment. Uh, but I would love to help you. Uh, I'm just not on as much as I usually am. Uh, but there's still people running for lures because they are definitely not running Castle Ravenloft. So uh, good luck to you, Michael, and I hope you find those heels of fury. Now we still have the Siege of Neverwinter event going on across the board and the same thing going across the board. Thank you, Cryptic, for making my job easier. So right now we've got 15% off VIP. So if you need to stock up on more, you're running low. Now's the time to get it. Also, you're going to get more shards and discounts with your guild marks going on right now. And if you're into PvP, you're going to get additional glory and discounts off glory boosters uh, going on until December 10th. Now, I'm glad that I waited to put out this video. There wasn't much going on in the world in Neverwinter, and the news could wait for a little bit, but I'm very glad that I did because Assist Man put up an amazing video which pretty much in summation says why I'm not doing anything in Neverwinter right now, especially as an Xbox player. Castle Ravenloft has been a buggy mess since the get-go. They keep saying that they're putting fixes into it, but it almost seems like they're making it worse every time. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description to his video. Definitely check it out. It gives some good insight of what to stay away from and why on console it's dead while we're waiting for Mod 15. And yeah, Michael, that's why I've not even been playing Neverwinter. Uh, aside from running posters, which stuff I already have, I mean, I don't mind helping other people, but I'm also now playing Fallout 76 and things like that uh, because Neverwinter can't keep my attention. Uh, I'm almost afraid here in Mod 15, I'm not that big into professions. I already have all my professions maxed out. I'm sitting on a whole bunch of resources already. I don't feel that that's going to be enough to keep me engaged after I do Acquisitions Incorporated. So I may have everything of Mod 15 that I want out of it done in two weeks, and then I'll be sitting waiting for Mod 16. So it, it's an unfortunate side that, you know, I love that they're making improvements, especially with the outdated profession system and things like that. Uh, but, 
you know, it's not additional dungeons with, you know, more campaigns or more regions or more content. So uh, I'm going to continue playing Fallout 76. I still need to get my review out for Warframe, uh, but I appreciate all of you and I will see you out there. All right, before that autoplay button kicks in, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter or check out these other two videos. Thanks for watching.